kind of class. Um, in this lab, we'll be looking at uh, how contraception, especially um, birth control pills work. Um, so why do we want to talk about this? One is it allows us to really analyze our understanding of the normal cycle when you can look at how um, contraceptions alter the process. So when you can understand how it alters it, that truly um, tests to see if you understand how the whole menstrual cycle and the pathway works. Um, and also, the uh, the birth control pill contraception is taken by many, many uh, female. And there's many reasons why a female would take it as besides uh, the contraceptive part. And the birth control pill are taken by female with heavy menstrual flow to make sure that they are not losing too much iron and blood. It's also taken by female who have a severe PMS symptoms, acne and PCOS. It helps really modulate those symptoms. Um, women with endometriosis, um, polycystic ovary, are all or just cysts in the ovary are all reasons why a female might take um, the um, contraceptive pill. In fact, actually, um, p uh, hormones used for p menopause are actually very similar to the birth control pill, pretty much the same, just at a lower dose. So understand that can also help us understand menopause. Um, so I'm a strong believer in understanding how something works so that we can better understand why it's prescribed, why a female need it, and also um, and how we can support our patients. Okay, so let's take a look at this. And the most, there's many, many, many variety of birth control pills and many varieties of birth control. I'm going to be focusing on the um, estrogen-based birth control pill because that helps with modulating all the symptoms of, of those diseases that I talk about. Things like the IUD or the progesterone only are more, more of a contraceptive function, whereas here we're going to be looking at how it actually regulates the female ovary if it's, there is a malfunction. Okay, so in most birth control pill, what you will see is that we have um, 21 days. So this is 21 days of hormones and there's some that has just slightly difference between weeks but it doesn't necessarily need to be different so it could be the same exact um, hormone level these are called active pills and the hormones in um, the, the hormone pills are estrogen and progesterone such as abbreviate okay so these little pills contain estrogen and progesterone each pill okay and like I said in Many pills is just a low, low it's just a um, those hormones for 21 days, the same pill. And then there is seven days here of really it's just inactive pill, nothing. There's nothing, just reminder pills. So these are sometimes called sugar pills, but they're not even sugar. <laughs> so they're just no hormone. I, and really what you want to say is there's no estrogen and there's no progesterone. Okay, there's nothing you can you can really throw them away and they don't have to contain anything. For some women who have iron deficiency anemia, these pills then are iron pills to help them um, build up the iron they, that may, they might lose in that week. Okay, so um, what does it do? So this is where it gets a little bit confusing. So I want to compare it to the normal. Well, I don't want to say normal, just what happens with all pill and then uh, when when it is on the uh, BCP. So if you think about it, we're graphing it. I wanted to copy exactly what it, what this graph, I use the same graph so you can graph it like the same, okay? So remember, um, estrogen changes going up and down, up and down, right? And then we have progesterone going up and down, up and down. Okay, so and sometimes this up in some female, this is the average. So in some female, this could be a lot higher or a lot lower, right? So there is a range of normal as well. Um, so on these days, right, 27 to um, day, you know, 28 and then 1 to 5, these are the seven days of the menstruation, PMS and menstruation. Okay, so if you look at the hormone, these seven days, they're low. So when you're in PMS and when you're menstruating, you actually have low amount of hormones. So those sugar pill days are copying that, okay? So that is when you don't take any hormone, 
you're on the sugar pill days and that's exactly what is happening and that's why when female take those sugar pills they are menstruating if they don't take those sugar pills then they don't do this so there are pills where they go three months on hormone and then one month where there's one week where they'll have the sugar pill so they'll only menstruate every three months okay so um, what happens is when when the when the female takes the hormone pill, you can see that it goes up on the hormone. And then every day that you take it, it stays up. Okay, so if you, you can't forget every day you take it, it stays up and high. So what this hormone does is remember, estrogen promotes the growth of the endometrium and progesterone promotes the, um, promotes the filling of the endometrium. So when we were looking at the the, um, the without birth control pill, you can see after menstruation, estrogen starts going up around here, and you can see that the endometrium is growing. All right? And then we have the filling. Okay? So on the birth control pill, the same thing when you take the estrogen, every day that you take it, you grow a little of the endometrium adding up. But because the estrogen is never as high as the cycle, or sometimes, you know, some women have it way up here, then the endometrium grows less because the estrogen is not as high. So you don't grow as much endometrium. And if the progesterone is not as high, also, you're not gonna get have as much as a filling. So some women who gets really bloated and have really painful menstruation or heavy menstruation, the birth control pill can, can really be a help because they can go from a growth. See, this is normal average, right? So some women who have we have really heavy menstrual flow, they might be growing it like this. But that's a lot of menstrual uh, blood to lose versus on the birth control pill, you really cut that down. And that's why a lot of women, if you ask them when they're on the birth control pill, they're much lighter menstrual flow, so they lose a lot less blood and also a lot less iron, okay? So that's the idea behind um, the pill. So one thing that students uh, don't understand is that when you're on the pill, what happens is that this is not happening. The hormone has to come from the birth control pill. So this is what's happening, okay? And, and that's what you're looking at, okay? So that's the birth control pill on there. And then let's take a look at what, so this is what the birth control pill, pill does to the uterus. Now let's look at what the birth control pill do to the ovary. Okay, so the goal is actually to work on the ovary if it's contraception that you're looking at, okay? So remember, in the normal cycle, what we have is we have FSH going up and then coming down and then going across and then going up again. So FSH is really only up when you're growing the follicles, right? FSH is important for follicle growth. And then, um, so that's what's going on, okay? So what happens with, with um, the birth control pill is that, remember we start taking the hormone at day five, right? You, day six, you're taking the hormone. Versus here, day six, estrogen is still low. So you're cutting that part off, okay? You're taking estrogen right in that beginning, okay? So what does that do? What that does is don't forget the HPO axis because we're looking at the ovary, right? Okay, so remember, we're not getting the hormone from the ovary anymore. So what is step one is that actually is the taking of the birth control pill. So what is in the birth control pill is step two is estrogen going up. So when estrogen goes up, what we're gonna get is negative feedback. And what the negative feedback is saying is that the GnRH is going down, right? Because estrogen's high. And step five, FSH is also going down. So what that's gonna do is it's gonna, by day six, what you're doing is, at step six too, is that you're, you're stopping follicle growth. Okay, so what you're seeing is that you stop the follicle from becoming the mature follicle. So this is what happens normally, but what you do is that you only 
have primary follicle. You never allow dominant selection to happen. And without dominant selection, you don't have a mature follicle. And without a mature follicle, you don't ovulate. Remember, the mature follicle is what leads to the higher estrogen surge and the LH surge and the ovulation happening. Well, if you don't have this and you don't have this and you don't have this, then you don't have that. So in a female who is on birth control pill, they only have those little, little itty bitty primary follicles that will die eventually, right? And, um, and you do not have a mature follicle ovulation or the corpus luteum. So no corpus luteum. Okay, no ovulation, no corpus luteum. So that helps. Um, this is why this birth control pill helps patients who have cysts, because our cysts develop right around here and around here. So if you don't get to this stage, well, you're not gonna grow cysts. And also it helps patients uh, with androgen, high androgen levels, because the androgen is produced by follicle around this stage in the ma before mature, and you never get the follicle to that stage. So androgen production goes down too for patients with PCOS. So um, I hope this helps you understand how the birth control pill works, and then you can um, answer some questions related to that. And if you have any questions on that, please send me an email, and these same questions are repeated in the lab practice quiz.